Genesis 1, 27, God created man in his image. In the divine, divine image, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Like Terry said, my husband and I met in Bakersfield. We live here and we married here. We've been married 10 years. Uh, within our first year of marriage, we had our first miscarriage. And then infertility set in. We didn't want to use in vitro or artificial technologies, so we sought the help of NAPRO technology physicians. Most of modern medicine for females bypasses the woman's problem and uh, forces a pregnancy or drugs. It doesn't solve the problem. NAPRO technology finds what isn't working in the woman's body or the man's body or both and applies treatments to cooperatively work with the body. We wanted to stay within the bounds of natural law and the moral guidelines of the church. Two years into that process, Terry called with an opportunity to adopt a baby. And the baby had been conceived in rape as she had crossed the border to the US. She knew the rapist. It was the man she paid to take her across the border. But she kept silent for fear. She had also brought her three-year-old son with her. She had to work in the fields with this vile man for several more months to pay the debt of crossing to support herself and her son. She hated him. When she realized that she was pregnant, abortion was her only choice. There was no way she could carry out the pregnancy and work in the fields. There was no way she could continue working with a newborn and support her son and work in the field. And how could she raise the child of a monster? She could never love that baby, and she hated the father of the baby. It was a secret, too. Nobody knew. Not even her family that she was in constant contact with. So who would tell her she was wrong in her case? So she went to the abortion clinic, and there she met sidewalk counselors. And if I remember correctly, it was Terry and Esther. She turned around. A Christian family took her in because Donna could not keep working. She didn't want to look at the baby. She didn't want to deal with it. But they said to her, what if you, what if you find a family for the baby? You could choose it. So they gave us a call. And we met with Donna at the Lifehouse with Terry and Esther and Tim. We had a little conversation. There was other families interested, but she did choose us, and we were thrilled. So that's how we began our journey with Donna. I started taking her to prenatal visits, and I got to bond with her. We began the adoption paperwork, we contacted Colette Wilson, we had our first interview with the adoption investigator, Everything was set in motion. A couple of my relatives who knew the story asked if I was afraid to adopt the baby of a monster. What if the baby turned out to be like the father? Already, we began to receive those comments. I didn't have any of those fears. One of my favorite cousins was a product of rape, and I'd always admired her birth mother and adopted father. And she is a dear, sweet girl. Now she's a young lady. Donna was induced two weeks early, and I was with her the entire time in the hospital, during the labor and delivery. Terry was there too, so was my husband. As soon as the baby was born, Donna just turned her head away. She didn't want to look. And the doctor said, it's a girl. We were expecting a boy. That's what the ultrasound said. <laughs> You should have seen Donna's face. It just changed when she heard, it's a girl. 
She turned to me, she looked at the baby. Do you still want the baby, since it's a girl? Of course. Please name her after your mother who passed away when you were a child. So we really bonded. She was beautiful, we named her Therese. Just five pounds, very tiny, rosy cheeks, perfectly formed. And she smiled, and I know people say they don't, but she smiled more than any other newborn I have met before or since, all the time. She loved to be held and cuddled. We spent a couple of nights together in the hospital, all three of us, Therese, Donna, and I. The final interview came with the social worker. She wanted to make sure Donna wasn't being coerced. I left the room. I was nervous. <laughs> Afterwards, the social worker came to me, and she was very satisfied. And she said, I want you to know, Donna made sure she didn't want anyone else to be a mother to that baby but you. We took beautiful Therese home. Friends and relatives celebrated with us and showered Therese with gifts. We got a crib and a bassinet and clothes. It was such a joyous time. The homeschoolers made her a cozy blanket while they were praying. We had sleepless nights, clothes feeding times, diaper changes, bathing, first doctor's visit, a lot of snuggling and cuddling. After a week, I received a devastating call. Donna had changed her mind. She wanted the baby back. She wanted to raise the baby. She realized the baby wasn't a monster. Therese looks like her, and she loved her baby. We had no legal choice but to give her back. It's difficult to articulate the pain of that separation. I did experience a type of post-traumatic stress disorder Thinking about it still brings up the hurt. Therese was never the child of a monster. She is a child of God. Otherwise, why would it have been so painful to give her up either for myself or Donna? We all fell in love with her instantly. She is a beautiful reflection of God. We haven't had contact with her since then, but she's ever present in our hearts and prayers. We consider her one of our children that we were blessed to hold in love for 10 days. We don't have any regrets. For whatever reason, God wanted her in our life for 10 days, and he wanted to rest in our lives for 10 days. I don't want to discourage adoption, Birth mothers taking back their babies is statistically rare. We would gladly do it again. Well, we continued with NAPRO technology, and almost two years to the date of having to give up Therese, I gave birth to Lily, who is now four. Two years later, we were blessed with Gianna. We did lose two more in between then, our home is now filled with joy again, with these little girls laughing and chattering and playing and lots of screaming and love. To me, it's summed up by Genesis 1:27 again. God created man in his image. In the divine image, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Thank you. phone call, I just didn't know how we were going to break the news to her. And it almost, almost made me not want to, to do it anymore, because I knew how hurt 
It was. But if it wasn't for the fact that I was able to offer that to her, that baby would have been gone. So I'm sorry that you had to go through the hurt, but little baby is very grateful for you. 